I know a lot of people wanted to see the Canon EOS RA tested with some of these impressive RF lenses and some wide field Milky Way work. There's lots of people that are able to do that and I know they will. I wanted to attach it to a huge telescope and take some deep sky images in the backyard. didn't plan on doing this today. This arrived this afternoon. It's supposed to be clear tonight, which means with this short 30 day window, I have to test this camera. It's gotta be used tonight. Okay, let's open this sucker up. Oh my goodness. This is one of the heaviest lenses I've ever felt for its size. So I was hoping to open up the camera first, but uh, I opened up the wrong box. It was of the similar size and weight. And in it was the 85 millimeter F 1.2 RF lens. This thing is an absolute beast. First of all, it's heavy as, second of all, it's got this nice flat dew shield on it. That's good for taking flat frames if I use a white card or the white t-shirt method. It's got a giant objective. There's actually a lock on the dew shield, which I like. Just a massive objective. This should be really interesting to use with the RA. Over here is the RF EF lens mount adapter. This guy is gonna let me use my existing Canon EF telephoto lenses, the 400 millimeter F 5.6, the 300 millimeter F 4. I'm really excited to try out those lenses with the RA. Uh, of course, I will try this 85 millimeter prime lens as well, but nice to have that adapter. Let's get to the good stuff. Okay, box number two. Oh my, I was talking to someone about this camera, the EOS RA, and they said, I wanna see what the box looks like. Canon usually does something really cool with the box. And what a first impression to see. I'm such a Canon fanboy, but that is so sick. Look at that. That is epic. Just an R in the California Nebula on a mirrorless camera. Oh baby. You know what, this one would make a good thumbnail. Maybe I'll get that right now. I gotta look like a douchebag, look excited, point to it. All right, that's good, that's good enough for now. Let's look at, let's take a look at this sucker. The Canon EOS RA. So a lot of you might be wondering, okay, why the heck did I get an EOS RA? It's brand new. Where did I get it? How did I get it? Canon reached out to me directly. Oh, finally, they noticed me. I've been shooting with Canon from day one. They didn't pay me or anything. No one's ever paid me to endorse a product for that matter. But Canon likes what I'm doing and even some of their team actually have watched my videos and have learned something about astrophotography from me. So the contact I spoke with, very nice gentleman, said that he's a big fan, he wants to send one over and he wants me to try it out. And I said, yes. We've got the battery, which looks to be the same battery as my Canon DSLRs, my 6D Mark II. Charger looks to be the same too. That's great news because I've got a lot of these batteries. We've got a connection cable. It's a USB-C type cable, which is a great sign. That's a modern cable to connect this mirrorless camera. I got to fight to not say DSLR to my computer to control the imaging session, to automate a sequence using EOS utilities. And here, Da, da 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 is the camera body itself. Uh, so far, the profile of the camera is smaller than, of course, a DSLR. There's no mirror in there. The depth is different. The viewfinder is a digital viewfinder, so it's not actually looking through a mirror. It's actually uh, just a smaller digital display in the viewfinder. Kind of interesting. I tested the RA last night. It was only clear for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And I just set up on the patio and uh, it wasn't a great session. It didn't last long, but it was cool to actually run the camera for a sequence. I did not plan on mounting the camera to a telescope of this size. I just needed something that was all set up and ready to go with a guide scope. I took the guide scope off the Z73, which I'd planned to use. So I'll just use the 132, I guess. So yeah, I'll be shooting over Here's towards Cassiopeia. If I do Orion, be like this. Just gotta watch out for it as it goes down. Overall, not that bad though. This doesn't scare me. 
All right, here you can see how I've got the RA attached to the end of the telescope using the RF to EF lens mount adapter. And then I've got my Canon T-ring on there attached to the field flattener reducer of this William Optics FLT-132 refractor. So a big F7 refractor, about 914 millimeter focal length. And then I've got that full frame camera and uh, that reducer 0.8, so pretty big field of view, a pretty wide field of view, I should say, even though I've got this massive aperture, 132 millimeters. And uh, I'll take advantage of the, the auto guiding on the guide scope here. I can use the batten off mask to focus the camera. And uh, the only thing is that I don't believe that my camera control software, APT, supports the RA yet. The, the cable supplied with the RA was a USB Type-C to Type-C, uh, which is great to see the Type-C on the camera, but my laptop doesn't have a Type-C socket. So even if I wanted to use EOS Utilities to control the session, I can't unless I get a Type-C to USB 2.0 adapter. So I was like, this one's all set up and ready to go. I'll just use the 132, the big monster. Why not, right? And look, at attached, no problem, just like I thought. Hmm. The only thing is, I don't know if... What were you thinking you were going to use? The 73, the little guy. The William Optics. Yeah, yeah, this one, this one's little baby. You took the guide scope off the other one? Yeah, I put it on the, um, I put it on the Esprit. Esprit. But I need to put a filter in here somewhere. Can't you thread one on? Yeah, but you're really not supposed to. You're really not supposed to do it the way I do it. As you can see, it's getting dark out here. You might be able to see Venus setting behind me in the west. I'm really excited to get going here with the EOS RA attached to a telescope, a nice big refractor. I'm just waiting for it to get dark enough uh, so I can use the Pole Master to polar align the EQ6. It looks like we're about there now, so I'm gonna do that. I also realized that my guide camera, the ASI 290mm Mini, has a USB-C to USB 2.0 cable that I could use to actually control my camera using my PC and EOS utilities, uh, but I need it for the guide camera. So I think I'm just gonna stick with the remote shutter release cable to actually take my pictures on the EOS RA and then just run the auto guiding through PHD2 in my computer. And the only problem there is that they're not synced up to do dithering, which kind of sucks, but there's some things I can do there, some manual dithering on my end, a little extra work, but I think it's worth it. I'm just going to do a one star alignment. That's all I'll need to train the pointing accuracy of the mount. And I'm gonna choose Capella because it's right there. I know this giant scope is gonna move in this direction, not run into anything. We're gonna slew to it now and it should be pretty darn close. I wanna make sure that there's no cable snacking either. Everything's pretty good, but there's a lot going on here. Ooh, looks pretty darn close to me right off the bat. To give you an example of how insane the live view 30 times zoom is, look at the diffraction spikes on my star that I'm focusing on in uh, the Pleiades. So I've got the Batnoff mask in there, but because I'm zoomed in 30%, thir sorry, 30 times, you can really make sure you've got that central spike aligned. And I'm hopping back there, so that's the star I'm focused on. I can zoom in. And there I'm in at five times and 30 times. Look at that. Well, I don't know how well you can see this, but this is pretty typical of a winter night sky here in Canada. So it's really not that clear at all. You can see kind of that awful transparency. So shooting through these high clouds right now, uh, it makes astrophotography a lot more challenging from locations like this. And you know, I'm not in a desert, I'm not in Arizona, I'm not anywhere dry. I'm somewhere with a lot of moisture, a lot of cold, and uh, it makes things difficult. But that's a lot of us astrophotographers in the city, on the Northeast, especially anywhere, the, you know, the upper states. You know what? You can only get so much out of skies like this, but we can try as hard as possible and work through these challenges to, to get amazing images. And this is, this is typical. I've shot in this, you know, many times before, and I'll continue to. 
So for those of you looking into the Canon EOS RA, yes, it's expensive, especially when you compare it to some of the dedicated astronomy cameras with cooling available. I get why this camera doesn't make sense for a lot of deep sky imagers with automated setups, but if you're more of a spur of the moment shooter or like to travel or do wide angle astrophotography like me, a mirrorless camera body has several advantages. I can tell you that the EOS RA is the most sophisticated camera I've ever used in my life, or that the potential uses for the RA in the field are staggering, but at the end of the day, this hobby is about the pictures, and I can't think of a better way to judge a piece of gear than with actual results from a regular dude's backyard.